According to a new report from RBC Economics, housing affordability could be at the worst levels ever seen in Canada as 50% of incomes are now going towards household costs. That's what we're going to discuss in today's video, everything to do with the RBC Home Affordability Report, and this one's going to be a doozy with some really interesting data. And I think what you're going to find is that some markets in Canada, believe it or not, have actually gotten more affordable, relatively speaking. I'm going to tell you which ones are the least affordable, which ones are the most affordable, and what you can expect going forward in the real estate market in the next couple of years, at least what I think you'll be able to expect. But before we get into it, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers. We are nearly there. The subscriber count in the last couple of days has been absolutely huge. So when we hit 25,000 subscribers, we're going to give away $5,000 to one lucky winner, but you have to be subscribed to win. And you have to pay attention to this channel so that you can learn exactly what you need to do to win because this $5,000, it's a big one. We're going to make sure that we do it right. Okay, so let's get right into it. Let's discuss the RBC Home Affordability Report. It's no secret, I don't necessarily think that RBC does mortgages as well as a lot of other lenders in Canada. But one thing that I do appreciate about RBC and that they do especially well is their economic reporting. In fact, the RBC Affordability Reporting that we're gonna look at today is something that I've watched for a considerable amount of time. And it's something that I actually use personally when I look at making investment decisions in different markets. So this is really great data. They did a really good job on this. And this is something that they've been tracking for quite some time. Now, I wanna show you the headlines first and foremost, because this is the headline here. RBC warns of worst affordability ever. Uh, ahead for homeowners. And basically in this report, the headline is this, 50% of incomes in Canada are now going towards housing. And if you're looking for a single family home, you're faring even worse than that at about 55%. Now this report comes out just on the heels of BMO Economics releasing a report yesterday, uh, talking about the full scale attack on Canadian home prices. Um, this has to do with the fact that interest rates are going up, there's low supply in major markets, and this is just not painting a rosy picture for Canadian real estate, which surprise, surprise, if you've been following along, you know that housing prices across Canada seem to be somewhat overvalued or a lot hotter than we're typically used to them being. And this is especially true for the two big major markets, Vancouver and Toronto. We talked about on Monday when we talked about the CREA reports and the average house in Canada basically being worth well over 800000 that if you took those two big markets out of the equation, it would basically lower the average price in Canada by about $178,000. And what you're going to see in this RBC economics report is that this supports the fact that we have two or three markets that are heavily weighing on the Canadian real estate market and that the rest of the country really isn't in as bad of a situation as those two cities. So here it is. I'm going to show you the RBC affordability report. Um, this is, like I said, some of the best data in Canada when it comes to making decisions about home buying and especially investing. By the way, if you're investing in this market and you're just getting into the investing game, I probably got some bad news for you. You know, I definitely believe that people should own a single family home at any given time and do that at the earliest opportunity, but buying at the top of the market or buying when the market is super hot like this typically doesn't end well. We saw this in 2006, 2007. Obviously we saw it in the United States in 2008 where everybody was buying because everybody was buying and that ultimately led to some sort of correction in the market, which left a lot of people with negative equity in their investments, even though they may have put 20 or 30% down. So not in my mind necessarily the best time to be going and investing in real estate. In fact, we've pulled back a lot of our investment in real estate information for that reason, because it's just not the right time from a numbers perspective. When affordability stops making sense, that's usually when investing in a real estate market stops making sense. So this is the RBC housing affordability measures. Um, and what you see here is you see the long-term aggregate. So uh, the gray line there is basically where affordability typically lies in Canada. You can see there's times where we are well above that and there's times where we are well below that. Um, and you can see the last time we were up around levels that we're at today was back in the 1990s. And of course, right after we hit these high affordability numbers, well, we saw corrections in the real estate market. And this is where we're at today. We're at the highest levels basically since 1990. Uh, single detached homes, 54% of incomes are going towards housing. If you're looking at condo apartments, well, that's still reasonably affordable at about 35%. But most people nowadays don't, for whatever reason, wanna live in a condo. They think that they deserve to be able to jump straight into a single family home. 
Obviously, I've had some opinions on that in past videos. I don't necessarily think that somebody should expect to buy an average home in an average market as their first home. Um, you probably got to start somewhere in the middle or somewhere in the bottom of the market, but that's just my opinion, obviously. Now, if we end up looking going down here and we start taking a look at some of the markets and what's happened, um, I find this graph really, really awesome because this shows housing prices going back to Q4 of 2019. This is the first graph I've actually found of this type where it shows the aggregate of the two years basically from pre-pandemic to now and how much prices have gone up and what you can see is that there's markets like Halifax that have gone up substantially 46 percent over the last two years Ottawa 40 percent Toronto 34 percent Montreal 33 percent Remember these Halifax and Ottawa numbers when we start to look at the actual affordabilities in individual cities, because I think you're gonna find these numbers interesting. And then kind of as you go through and you look at Vancouver up about 30%, and then Calgary and Edmonton markets uh, and Regina market, obviously these prairie provinces that rely heavily on, on energy and agriculture, they haven't gone up quite as much primarily because the industries that supply those cities haven't gone up to the same tune, but we're starting to see some hotness in those markets. Now this graph here, this is the next one. This is the stretch property valuations in different markets, uh, differences in affordability between Q4 of 2019 and Q4 of 2021. And basically what this is showing is that cities like Calgary have basically had the same level of affordability throughout the entire pandemic. Cities like Edmonton have actually gotten more affordable from a relative perspective. And then you can see that the affordability in places like Halifax, places like Ottawa, places like Toronto, and places like Vancouver has gone down quite substantially, right? Like the more positive the number here, the greater the reduction in affordability. So, you know, this is a really interesting graph to look at. And I think it goes to show that not everything is bad everywhere in Canada. In fact, there are still markets in Canada that are very much affordable. Now, I do want to actually jump into the PDF version of this report because it's got a little bit more data here. And this is where it gets really, really interesting. Remember when I talked about Ottawa and Montreal? Look at this. Ottawa and Montreal still have pretty reasonable affordability, about 41% of incomes, 41.2 in the case of Ottawa, 41.3 in the case of Montreal, are going towards actual housing costs. Now, if you remember that long-term trend that we saw in the first graph, this is still in line with that long-term trend of affordability. And if you look at places like Edmonton and Calgary, well, Edmonton and Calgary are still very, very, very much affordable. These are still markets that you can make an average income, buy an average house, and live a pretty decent lifestyle, especially in a place like Calgary, which is one of the most livable cities in the world, according to The Economist. I think it's number four or number five at the moment. So you've really got, you know, a great place to live in a place like Calgary and still a very affordable market to live in. Now, if you go and you take a look at Halifax, because I said I wanted to show you Halifax, we go all the way down here. And even though we've had this significant run up in prices in the Halifax market, you can see that Halifax's affordability still remains well within long term averages. So yes, the prices have gone up. What I would suggest for Halifax is that you've had a suppressed market for quite a significant amount of time. And those increases in home values have actually brought the market up to normal affordability. So still a very affordable place to live for the long term at about 32.5%, even though it feels more expensive than it did previously. So here's the reality of it. There's some good news and there's some bad news, especially with respect to affordability in Canada. First of all, if you're in one of the two most populous areas in the country, which is the GTA and the GVA, houses are very much unaffordable in both of those markets. You're either gonna need to change your expectations with respect to the type of property that you buy, maybe you're buying a condo rather than a house, or you're probably gonna to have to look for greener pastures, maybe outlying areas or places like Alberta or places like Quebec or places that aren't necessarily as unaffordable as those two markets. Because here's the reality of Toronto and Vancouver. I've been watching these numbers in these two markets for a very, very, very long time. And they have always been high compared to the rest of Canada because those two markets pull up the, the perceived unaffordability of the Canadian real estate market, even though a very significant amount of Canada is still very much affordable. And this is gonna be interesting to see what happens when we're looking at the budget that's coming up next week. And we look at how the federal government's going to react from an interest rate perspective, from a policy perspective, and pretty much across the board when it comes to real estate. Because the real reality here is that there's two markets we need to fix. We need to fix Vancouver and we need to fix Toronto. 
And we need to fix those two markets by way probably of supply in those two markets because those are the two markets that have significant demand for housing. Now, perhaps the market forces will take care of this on their own. People will say, you know what, enough is enough. I can move to Calgary or I can move to Edmonton or I can move to Halifax and I can get a more affordable house and maybe work remotely and maybe make a similar income or maybe make less and just have a better lifestyle. But, you know, maybe the market forces themselves will take care of this. But if they don't, we've definitely got to address the supply issue in these two big markets and doing things to overall policy across the country. So change, making rules that change borrowing abilities for all of Canadians when really we only have two markets that really need any ma major changes is probably not wise. Unfortunately, from a federal perspective, it's probably what's going to happen and hopefully Hopefully what happens is that at some point the federal government realizes that you can't paint the entire real estate market of the entire country with a single brush. You need to start looking at tactics and tools for specific markets so that the affordability in the markets that are the least affordable is taken care of rather than making major changes that affect outlying markets that don't necessarily have an affordability issue or a housing issue. So, you know, really interesting data from RBC Economics. I encourage you to go and take a look at this for yourself. Just Google RBC Economics. If you found this video useful do me that favor hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video don't forget about that race to 25,000 subscribers and we'll see you on the very next one cheers <laughs>